Hugo Lager want their audience to feel they've been hit by the softest baseball bat in the world. So I spoke to Tim and Harm from the band to find out exactly what they meant. Yeah, I'll stand by that. I think what I, was, what I meant by that was that uh, um, you can make rock music that's quiet music. I think for years and years the association has been that if you make quiet music, it either has to be folk music or it has to be new age music. Um, but you can do delicate things and you can do things that aren't necessarily at the highest volume, but still at a pretty high level of energy or it's still a pretty high level of emotional intensity, but you don't necessarily, it doesn't have to be new age music, it doesn't have to be folk music. And I think that's something that's been happening in the late 1980s and is gonna really spread in the 1990s, is a whole sort of movement of people making quiet rock and, rock and roll, quiet rock music. I know, I think that the Cowboy Junkies are a good example of that, you know, and there are gonna be plenty of others as well. Hardiness sometimes implies um, forcing something. That's the bad side of hardiness, and we're not that. We don't force what we do. I think it comes pretty naturally to us. We have never been intentionally weird or intentionally, even intentionally unique. I think uh, we do things differently, but the things we do come pretty easily to us, and that's what I think makes us different, makes us say, and I've been told this by people who've come to see us, that's what makes us uh, artist, artistic, but not arty, and what makes us different or unique, but not weird. Because um, deliberate weirdness or deliberate artiness, I think, is like a really bad thing to be. And, you know, it's to really be avoided. And if you can do something different and put the pieces together a little differently without saying, gee, what can I do now to be so unique? What can I do now to be different and weird? I think you've really achieved something. We get very extreme reactions from people, um, meaning people love us and they hate us, which is fine. I mean, I always thought that was an admirable quality in a group um, to be able to elicit such strong reactions. Um, it's definitely not for everybody. I don't think we have illusions about being a, mass, uh, a massively popular group. But seriously, <laughs> we're not. We didn't. If we wanted to make money, we'd be doing something else. You know. <laughs> That's certainly true. I, I, you know, I was in a in a bookstore yesterday, and I saw um, this these little digests. It was a pretty conventional bookstore, but it had in the sort of magazine section this sort of little fanzine devoted only to Hawkwind, and. Uh, I thought, well, that's great, you know, that's kind of like the sort of, the sort of thing I'd like us to sort of be sort of like, you know, that we'd be this band who meant a great deal, a great deal to a few people. I think, I, I anticipate that we're going to end up in the tradition of bands, you know, like Velvet Underground or Wire or Perubu. Bootsy band, Collins. <laughs> bands who self, who attract, say, far more interest five, eight, 10, 15 years after the release of their records than they did possibly at the time of their release. So we're erecting a huge monument in our... <laughs> right. It's a bit of a weird concept, though, sort of like thinking, yeah. what we're doing now is being ignored, but like five, 10 years' time, we're going to be mega. It's, def it's, it's difficult <laughs> explaining it to the phone company when they call and want you to pay the bill. <laughs> Hold off 15 years. I think that's when the royalties are going to start coming in. But it's like, I, I know that the Velvet Underground, um, we're less popular uh, in the States, for instance. I can't speak for England. I suppose England as well. We're less popular, far less popular, during their own time than we are now. And we're not very popular at all. <laughs> and, uh, but yet, those records did not sound anything like records where pe 
people were making in 1967, 68, and 69, much the same way as I hope that our records don't sound like anything that was made in 1987 and 1988 and 1989. Um, and I think that is a quality that's going to stand out perhaps more in the future when people look back and say, there wasn't another band at the time like Hugo Largo. So, and, you know, they should listen to that and buy our records in the used bins now before they become, you know, very expensive items. <laughs>